Hey there, it's Dom. Welcome back to the MS Guide. We've got something pretty awesome for you today. I love a good news story, and I hope you love a good news story too. If you remember, a little while ago, Rachel allowed the MS Guide to follow her through her stem cell treatment. The good, the bad, the ugly, the really tough, the really great. And now Rachel's going to rejoin us to tell us how things have gone. I'm not going to put a major spoiler in, but pretty awesome's not a bad way to look at it. So I'll try and break the video up into chapters if you want to jump around. Not all stem cells go perfectly for people, but it is without doubt probably the most effective therapy. And sure, it covers risk, and Rachel will cover that, but it's all about front-loading the risk. I love talking to Rachel, and it's so good to hear how positively her life with MS has been affected by her HSCT. So enjoy the video. Here comes Rachel. everybody like i promise we're back with rachel it's not six months on it's eight months on i think rachel's been a little wrapped up and feeling awesome so uh how are you i'm doing really well thank you how are you i i'm excellent as as ever so but you're the one that had hsct which is stem cells which is the entire transplant thing and i don't know folks if you haven't seen it Rachel shared her journey with us on the channel so you can see the good the bad and dare I say the ugly when you weren't having a great yeah. time of it but take us Rachel take us to a little bit about the beginning if somebody hasn't seen anything and heard it I mean life is pretty crap for you can you yeah. help us understand where you were before where you got to yeah so I was diagnosed in 2018 I had two rounds of Lemtrada I uh, alentuzumab. I kept relapsing. I had lots of breakthrough activity. Relapses were coming thick and fast. Approved for stem cell transplant at Hammersmith. Took a little time to get in there, and I was transplanted in June of 2022. The it was about three weeks in hospital. Um, it was pretty intense. Uh, and as you say, shared some videos in there. Of oh, oh! I the, just wanted the to good get days out and the bad. And give you a hug. You look so sad. Uh, so it wasn't, wasn't the most pleasant time of my life. Um, then I had, I was off work uh, until November of 2022, so recovering. And since then, I've been back at work full time. I've got two young kids. I am back to energy levels of pre-children. So bouncing around the place, doing really well. Would it be fair to say, I mean, I think I've had MS a long time. You know, I always wonder... If somebody could just magically take it away, what would normal feel like? Yeah, you know, and is, I think is that what something... you've got? Sort of back to what you would consider normal. So this is a question that I ask lots, and I tried to figure out before going in what would good feel like, what would success feel like, and lots of the doctors say, you know, you're hoping for a halt. You're not hoping for miracles. You're not hoping for anything. I think now I'm on the other side. I feel like I did when I was on steroids for a relapse. So that steroid rush of, I'm feeling good, I feel capable, I can do this. I feel like that most days. Obviously, I still get tired. I have a life, I have kids and stuff like that. But I feel really great. And I think I was living with a lot more fatigue and a lot more chronic pain than I was aware of because I got so used to it. I think any time... I've had an attack and then recovered. You, for me, it's not this really sort of rich up and down, should we say? It's a really like this, but you look back and think, "Good God, I just settled with all this rubbish, and 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 now it's not there." And I'm sort of, you know, in in a much smaller version than you. Sort of got this. Oh, I feel good again. Yeah, and you it's, don't there's realize definitely how bad that. you've felt. So. You had this phrase, which I repeat to other people. I've repeated it to many doctors that I know, um, patients, and it's about risk. Because let's let's be fair, P stem cells are still considered by many to be, oh my God, why would you do that? So what? apart from the fact that your MS was deteriorating quickly, it looks scary, I suppose. You hear scary things. So why would you do that? So for me, the my disability was increasing quite dramatically um, and the relapses were happening so frequently that I didn't feel that I was getting any chance to recover and that my body wasn't being able to repair itself. 
um, with alumtuzumab failing, I really did want to take the risk while I was young, while I had limited disability in the hopes that I would make a great recovery. And that chance seems to have paid off. I have made a great recovery. I am walking. I went for a 5K run the other day. I'm going Stop to the gym off. again. <laughs> I know, and it's 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 insane. And these, it wasn't pleasant. You know, nobody needs to see a middle aged lady waddling down the road crying in happiness while trying to run. Just just, but just it, FYI, <laughs> running is not pleasant in my opinion ever. So. <laughs> No, but so I'm starting to get back to the gym. I'm trying to get fit again. I feel more on it at work. And what up here? So, yeah, sharper. And you, you've got a pretty yeah, serious job, haven't you? Yeah, I do. I work in I work in HR, and I look after a lot of big programs of work. Uh, the main part of my job is making connections, and one of the things that I've really noticed is I need to be able to listen to what somebody tells me their needs are and go, I have the resource that can help for that. I can pull together a program that's going to address that need. And being more on it has made that so much easier. I have more thinking power and it it really has been transformative. I'm going to be a little blunter. You're quite senior in a multi-million pound organization. And, you know, to me, I just think, you know, when you have that role, you have responsibilities. Like you say, you're matching people up. But, yeah, this idea of suddenly getting your brain back, yeah. your, your ability to do this, to see different threads and all this kind of stuff and pull them together. And, I mean, it's just the nature of the job. It doesn't make you a better person or worse person. It just is, you know. And, you know, we've joked in the past before that uh, I live my life by spreadsheets. But a main part of my job is strategy. And it is having those project plans in place and running ahead down different paths and foreseeing what might go wrong. I don't always catch everything, but trying to foresee what can happen and put measures in place to fix that. So, yeah, it has been helpful to be able to think in a straight line again. I mean, absolutely. I remember it's only after, like I said, after the relapse has passed and you realize how, to me, I expressed it, how linear your thinking's become. And then all of a sudden you can start to pluck in things from elsewhere and mix them up and come out with a conclusion, should we say? And, and that's, um, it's a pretty special feeling, I think. You know, it that brings me closer to crying than running 5K. I, I cry for different reasons running 5K, but it's, uh, yeah. So Rachel, many, many people think stem cells is this incredible risk, but when you and I spoke about the risk and there's risk in everything, driving the car, um, you know, going on an airplane, going on the train, whatever. But how do you, you express the risk really well in a way that I was envious of? How, how would you say the risk, that you manage the risk? So for us, when it, it came to, and looking at the different options that were available, stem cells felt like we were front loading the risk. So yeah, there are some big scary things to consider, but there isn't long-term repeatable levels of risk so there's risk with every infusion that you have so if you're having that every month or if you're having that every six months there's risks with the relapses that you have and the damage that they do and the, there's risks with the steroids that you get for those with stem cell it felt like we were rolling all of that up and just bringing it right to the front and going yes this is a risky thing to do but when we look at it as an overall it's not much more risk and you know I want to be able to do things when I'm older. I have been haunted by the stat that uh, Professor Giovanoni had mentioned before about, you know, within 10 years, X number of people are medically retired. And as someone who was approaching five years into the, the their progression, and I know that you're further along in that, I didn't want to be that person. I didn't want to be medically retired. And with some of the more recent relapses that were happening, I started to see that that could be a really distinct possibility that I wouldn't be able to do my job because I wouldn't be able to connect the things and I wouldn't be able to um, be as on it as I needed to be. And so for me, yeah, the stem cell seems risky, but compared to what? And are you really weighing the risk up appropriately? And I think that it can be 
can be really easy to to minimize certain risks but also to overemphasize others and for us as a family and it was a family conversation and it was a family decision we decided that it was a risk that was worth taking and it seems to have paid off so far. there are others yeah there are others that that haven't been as lucky and that their risk profile is maybe slightly different or their disease burden was higher going into it and they've had different outcomes but for me and for my family the risk we we wanted to try and take that risk now while I was young while I was healthy while I wasn't carrying a huge amount of disability in the hopes that I'd be able to recover more but I think there's two kinds of well there's more than one kind of risk here there's the risk of um dying during the procedure which was used to be and people still quote one percent but I was Basil Sherrick said to me and he's the leader in in Sheffield and uh, Professor Sherrick and he said they got it far lower than that now yeah. far far lower but so there's a risk of death by having the procedure and you could count that against me do you ride a motorbike do you do you go running on the road you know all that kind of stuff yeah. you know life is all relative risk and then yeah. there's the risk of it not being as effective as it has been for you and many people but there's many people where it hasn't been and i know one young man and he's a bit disappointed because i think he thought everybody deep down thinks they're going to be a rachel and uh in terms of success yeah. but, you know it does it's not like that for everybody and you're right you know so there's your disease there's your comorbidities there's your age there's your weight there's any pre-existing condition all this kind of stuff so you know it's not this binary it works or it doesn't work or it's super dangerous or it's not super dangerous plus we are very fortunate it is a first world incredible healthcare system and yep. stem cells and ms i mean some of the other doctors just kind of giggle because we get very worked up in the ms world and and the oncologists you know and the hematologists who's like yeah we do this daily you know yeah. we, People with blood cancers, they are like, okay, next step stem cells. You know, there isn't this yeah. hang up about it that there is in MS with many people. Yeah. But yeah. I have a theory. Yeah. I have a theory that MS is not a disease which is considered to kill somebody. It will deteriorate you at different rates. But, you know, whereas you say the word cancer and everyone goes, oh my God, they're going to die. And 50% of cancers are curable. But it's just, um, I find it perverse that they want us to get sicker and sicker before they give us better and better. You know, this escalation model of drugs, and you mentioned Prof Giovanni, you know, and many others talk about, I mean, Aaron Bosser, a friend of mine, talk about, you know, this this flipping the pyramid, you know, let's hit it hard and early and limit the progression. And so, so like you say, I mean, you happen to have it bad, shall we say, you know, I, somebody yeah. said, what's Rachel like? And I went, I think it looks like a bomb went off in her head. <laughs> <laughs> so, and this is the really hard thing where it's really hard to stack rank yourself and humans love to do that and I had I was like for me I'm just like this is my MS and you know family member with MS and so compared to him I'm like oh that's where I am hmm. but then I was chatting with the nurse and I go for my monthly bloods and I was like so where am I and she's like oh oh you're, you're definitely our worst <laughs> I was like oh Oh, right. Okay. I thought I was, you know, not that bad. <laughs> She's like, no, 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 you're really, really bad. Mm. The discussions you never have with patients that, you know, it's all about, okay, you've got MS and you're feeling X and Y now, and we can medicate them and do this. But I have never heard of a doctor or one doctor I know having the discussion saying, let's look at you in five, 10, 15, 20 years time. And we're not medicating for now with your DMT. We're medicating for then. So like you said, uh, you know, he said to me, he said, you're going to be 50. You're going to have debts on a mortgage on your, you know, this was in the US, you know, your college loans, whatever, your kids want to go to college, you know. Yeah. How effective do you want to be then? Or do you want to be, and nothing's guaranteed. It's all, all we've got is, these are the statistics for, everybody wants to be the outlier, but most of us aren't. Yeah. I'm a bit of an outlier because I've had it 29 years and I can still go rowing. What yeah. happened to make it like that? You're the outlier in the, you're the super successful HSCT person. Yeah. So 
what tips would you give if somebody was sitting if somebody was on the other side of the fence of you now if they're sitting there going god you know my ms is come on like a freight train or i've just been diagnosed with ms you know i mean everybody talks about stem cells i mean what what's the option sorry i just checked my mic i thought oh my god is it not on but it is (laughs) and what what would your tips be for somebody on the other side of the fence when they're getting going on the ms dare i say journey versus where you are now so i would i'm a strong believer in the treat it hard treat it early um my main bit is to investigate what the options are i do think that there are some great drugs out there and that i was unfortunate that they didn't seem to work for me and um, so i don't necessarily think that you need to run straight to stem cell i think there's some great stuff there um but if it doesn't work for you advocate for yourself so the number of times that i'd sit in the ward and people would be like no oh, that's not for me or you know i don't want to give that and i'm like have a punt have a go, see what happens. You well, know, yes, way up the risk. That's what I don't get. It's not for now or next week. You've got it for life and it's just going to get worse. Yeah, yeah. And and you deserve every opportunity and you deserve to live the life that you wanted to live. And you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, but I'd like to be in the best shape I can to yeah. meet whatever the future holds. And, you know, there's, yes, you can, can, you can, you know, look at your diet and you can look at your exercise and they're all great things to do. But medicine's wonderful. <laughs> like, have a go, see what happens. And I think, you know, we talk about front loading the risk. We talk about the decisions that we've made. My other half and I made the decision right at the front to be brave and to not let fear make a decision and to try and be cool about and, and to weigh up what we were thinking of doing. But you have to believe in yourself and you have to believe that you're worth fighting for. And just make a decision so yeah i've gone for stem cell and lots of people think that that is something that is going to change the world and it might cure me you know they're throwing that word around as far as we're concerned as a family i've bought five years i've bought five years of medical advancements of science improvements i hopefully won't accrue any more disability in those five years and compared to the past five years so when i started and how many relapses I've had, if I can just hold the line for five years, goodness knows what they'll have invented by then. Yeah, and you mustn't dehydrate yourself through crying out of happiness. That would be a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, Rachel, look, I'm so grateful that you came on the MS Guide to catch us up with where you are now. And, you know, it may sound facile, but, you know, long may it continue. You know, and like you say, you know, more and more things are coming online etc and it'll be super interesting just from a personal point of view to think how are you doing in five years how are you doing in 10 years you know all the tests i mean i imagine the doctors want to know this too you know so (laughs) it's a thing i just mentioned if anybody's thinking of this in the uk ask your doctor about the star ms trial because though you weren't on the star ms trial i know but the star ms trial is looking at stem cell therapy and it really wants to recruit patients. So you may just get it that way. So Rachel, thanks again so much. Say hi to your wonderful husband and your kids for me. Will do. And we'll catch up soon. Cheers. Thanks so much, Tom.